Please welcome Ofer Israeli, founder and CEO of Elusive Networks. So I'll start off saying that, you know, I, I get to take this talk immediately after the former director of the NSA. So Nadav, Liran, thank you for that. <laughs> A good place to start. Today we're going to be talking about uh, deception technology and how that's a different way to look at cyber attacks. And we'll start off by discussing actually something from the physical world and not the cyber world. And we'll be talking about Belgium and a small district in Belgium called Antwerp. And this is a small district, you know, it's not very big, but it processes over 80% of the world's diamonds. Meaning this becomes obviously a very lucrative location for thieves. And indeed in 2003, Antwerp Diamond Center was hit by an Italian gang, La Scola de Torini. They were able to rob just over $100 million worth of diamonds, gold, and other jewelry. The attackers, or the gang here, uh, got away. They got away with the loot. It was never recovered. The head of the gang, a guy called uh, Leonardo, was actually detained at some uh, point. Uh, apparently, by the way, he was detained because he got caught, or they caught a sandwich with his DNA, which is you know, kind of a funny situation if you think about carrying out an attack that yields $100 million and the salami sandwich is what got you, kind of makes you wonder. Anyway, um, none of the other gang members were caught, the jewelry was not recovered, and obviously when you think about this type of attack, you're definitely thinking about a very prolonged planning process, it's not something that just happens, right? It's very clear to us that this is thought out, it's planned, it's carried out in a very methodolo methodolo methodological manner. We won't go into all of the details of the attack, but I will say the level of sophistication here was quite high. For example, at the end of the attack, when the, when the gangs uh, were actually inside the vault room, they broke into, uh, they passed all kinds of security mechanisms such as thermal detectors, seismic detectors, breaking into a vault that contains a hundred million dollars is probably not an easy task, and they also broke into a hundred out of the 189 safe boxes that were inside the vault itself. If you think why a hundred out of 189, Apparently, these guys didn't have the capacity to carry out more loot than what they got, which again, if you're a thief, is probably a good problem to be in. Um, but obviously, you know, the, it was very thought out. They went through various different stages, starting out by recognizing where is the residency that all of this loot exists in. They were able to penetrate into that building um, and bypass the security guards that were on the ground floor. They eventually made their way into the back room where the elevator led them two stories under the earth to the secure area. When they got there, there were security cameras, as you would anticipate, monitoring everything that's happening in the area of the vault. So apparently these folks did something that we see in the movies, and there were static pictures being fed to the surveillance teams, not seeing everything that's being carried out behind the scenes. Kind of an Ocean Eleven type of trick. They moved forward to break into the vault. It contains millions and millions of combinations. Bypassing the combinations, they broke into the uh, physical measures of it and were able to eventually break into the safe boxes and get the diamonds that they were after. But imagine something different. Imagine what this would look like had the gang not seen one vault, but they had seen multiple vaults. What would have happened had they not been confronted with one reality where they're attacking Antwerp Diamond Center, but they're seeing multiple Antwerp Diamond Centers? And just for the sake of argument, let's say they cannot differentiate between this Antwerp Diamond Center and this Antwerp Diamond Center. What would the attack look like in that kind of case? So we take this schema over here and we draw it out multiple times, right? And now we have an attacker going in or the gang going in and confronted with hundreds of security teams, security guards, not just one. One of them might be the real security guard, but all of the rest are fake. Kind of like Agent Smiths from the Matrix running all around, you can't know which one of them is the right one. When they reach the vault, they see multiple vaults in every location in front of them. They don't know which is the vault that actually contains the diamonds and which, is not, which doesn't. And so on and so forth as you carry out the actual attack itself until you are able to reach into the safe boxes, 
grab the diamonds and when you possess the diamond itself, you either have the real one or you have the fake one. Kind of makes you wonder what you guys have in your pockets and I'm sure none of you are anxious to find out. <coughs> so this is what we call proactive security. This is a kind of mechanism to be a proactive in luring the attacker into making the mistake, in controlling the environment, building it to a, in a place that we have home court advantage, and we're able to control what he's doing, what he's seeing, where he's going, and tunneling his activity as opposed to reacting to it. In the physical world, this has been done in multiple different instances. What we see here, these four strong gentlemen that are carrying a tank, are not that strong, but they're carrying a demi-tank. This is from World War II, where these tanks were planted in multiple different locations in order to confuse and deceive Nazi Germany. When they were flying overhead and you see platoons of tanks, you probably update your strategy of where it is that you, you want to be attacking through, which actually made you just bypass non-real tanks. But what has happened in the last couple of years is that we've been able to take this physical measure and transform it into the cyber world. So what we see in front of us here is one of Elusive's customers. We see a network or a part of the network here that is 5,000 machines and 10,000 attack vectors. Each node is a machine or a user. Each line is an attack vector, which is a mechanism to jump between machine to machine. What we do is we draw out that kind of map but then using deception, we turn it into this map. And now for the attacker that he's confronted with the task of moving from the left-hand side of the screen to the right-hand side of the screen, life is not so easy anymore, right? You have to kind of walk this minefield without ever stepping on a mine, but you cannot understand what is the mine in advance. And hence, this becomes a real complexity. We as a security team can obviously differentiate. We can see what is white, we can see what is orange, the attacker doesn't have that privilege. When the attacker does move within the network, we can follow and track that movement and activity. We can understand how close he is to my crown jewels or how far away is he. So do I have time to contain this or do I really need to act now? And with that, really flip the table on the attacker's standpoint. Had deception been deployed at Antwerp, they would have been left with this. Thank you. And while I do realize that you all came to hear this fascinating talk, and I thank you for that, I'm pretty sure that there is somebody in the crowd that wants to understand if he has a real diamond in his pocket or a fake diamond. So um, three of you are going to be uh, happy with uh, the results of this uh, exercise. For the three that, do, uh, that I do call out their numbers, number one, please stand up and so you can all have an embarrassing moment. And number two, please meet Gilly at the end of the bar that she will give you uh, the diamond itself. So, ready for number one? No, huh? Ready for number one? All right, lucky number one is 23. Where is our embarrassing moment? 23. <laughs> if I'm out of time, I get to keep the rest. <laughs> All right, we'll find out who 23 is later. Move. Opa! Lucky you! <laughs> All right. Mazalto. Over to Gilly, right there. So you took the embarrassment all the way to its full extent. You can just stand up on the spot. <laughs> All right. Moving forward, lucky number 85. All right. And you have Gilly up there. And finally, 472. Who has 472? All right. Thank you very much. Enjoy.